When one looks at the church today, you might wonder what in reality is Christianity. The unbelieving world looks at the religious person and points him out as the Christian. And this is why they are confused and think there are so many hypocrites in the church. Christianity is not religion. The unbelieving world is fooled into thinking that religion is Christianity. Christianity is not something that is made by man. Christianity is something that was created by God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It centers around the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a personal relationship, something that God performs in a man. It's not something that we perform. God has to recreate a person to become a Christian. And today I want to speak on this subject. Can a person know that he is a Christ one? Does the Bible instruct us on how to become a Christ one? Oh yes, the Lord gave us clear instruction and there will be no excuse for anyone. And before I get into this message, I will ask the Lord to bless us. Heavenly Father, I come before you in Jesus' name. And I pray, O oh God, that the power of your Spirit will rest upon this message so that people will understand. I thank you for your grace. I thank you that you will open the Scriptures today to the hearts and minds of them that are listening. I ask you to bless us today in Jesus' name. Amen. In the days of Paul, the whole world was, un was in such a confusion. And then the Apostle Paul was sent out into all the nations to try to straighten that confusion out. And he came to the people of Athens who were worshipping all kinds of God. Talk about confusions. There were so many gods there that they even had one God which was called the unknown God. And the Apostle Paul zeroed in on that one unknown God. And I will read you the story here. It's found in Acts chapter 17 verse 24. He tells them, the one whom you worship without knowing, him I proclaim to you. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped with man's hands as though he needed anything, since he is given to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has de determined their uh, pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwelling. This is how clear God operates. He pre-appointed their boundaries and their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might find Him, though He is not far from each one of us. For in Him we live and move and have our being. For we are also his offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, or stone, something shaped by the art and devices of men. And today we could translate that into some religion that people came up with. Because today people worship him through their religion. In those days it was through silver or stone or some other object. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands that all men everywhere to repent, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given us assurance of this by raising him from the dead. What a very clear story we have. There is one person who is one of these days going to judge every person on earth. In verse 30, 31 it tells us very clearly, there is appointed a day 
on which he will judge the world in righteousness. And the person who did who will do that, hey, God had raised him from the dead. And we definitely clearly understand that that person is Jesus Christ. So I would tell you people, get rid of your religion if Christ is not the center of it. Because in the old days they were worshipping all kinds of different gods. And this is the same problem today. People try to come to God through their assumptions or through some idea that their forefathers has come up with. The only way to eternal life is through Jesus Christ our Lord, the one who will some of these days judge the world in righteousness. The Bible gives us very clear instruction on how to come to Jesus and to attain that eternal life. We can read all of the scriptures where it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And when we go through the scriptures, you can Regardless which book you read, they will all point to Jesus. The Bible teaches in Romans chapter 3 very clearly that we are the righteousness of God by faith in Jesus Christ. No one will have an excuse. They will not be able to say, we did not know. The Bible also shows us very clearly how we can know that we have that eternal life. Oh yes, the scripture is full of beautiful scriptures, how one can gauge himself where he can know that he has that eternal life. For instance, in Philippians, it tells us to rejoice in the Lord always. It tells us to rejoice evermore. What reason do we have for rejoicing? In Luke chapter 10, the apostles came to the Lord Jesus Christ rejoicing. And the Lord God said to them, why are you rejoicing? And they said, because we were able to heal the sick. We were able to cast out devils. They fled from us. And the Lord said to them, that's not really the case for rejoicing. But rejoice that your name is written in the book of life. Rejoice that your name is written in heaven. So by these scriptures, we can understand that we can know that we have that eternal life. The Bible teaches that in the last days, seducing spirits will be unleashed on this planet. And it is far too serious to take a chance to, and to go on in our everyday life hoping that we have this eternal life. For we will not get the second chance. It is appointed unto men once to die, after that the judgment. We put so much emphasis in trying to make money so that we can have enough for retirement. But far too many people do not care enough about their salvation to take the time to seek for God. For it tells us very clearly here in Acts that God is not very far from us. And He is showing that we are created in His image. And He wants us to seek for Him so that we can find Him. And Jesus, who is not far from us, will show Himself if we only make a small effort. Yes, dear friends, can we identify with the Apostle Paul when he tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 16, that the Spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. We, a lot of times we have to read the Bible to find out where we stand with Christ. But when it comes to salvation, when it comes to being a child of God, the spirit that has been placed within us should bring us the joy and the assurance that we are the children of God. The Apostle Paul 
writes it very clearly. In 2 Timothy 1.12, he tells us, I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed unto him against that day. The Apostle Paul was the same person as we were. He's giving us instruction on how the Holy Spirit can open our hearts and our minds to the truth of knowing that we are a child of God. He tells us we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. All things become new. And then he goes on to tell us there is a crown of righteousness waiting for him. And he tells us not only me it's waiting for, but all those who looked for and loved the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you identify with these scriptures? You can know whether you are a child of God. Yes, the Bible has instructions on how to attain eternal life, but all, it also tells us very clearly that we can know that we have eternal life. We don't need to go on in our humdrum uh, everyday life hoping or, or not quite sure of ourselves. We can rise up in the morning feeling secure knowing that Jesus is in control and that our souls are resting in His presence. For the Bible teaches that we are seated in heavenly places far out of reach of Satan. We can never be touched or harmed by him once we have become a new creation in Christ Jesus, once we have the mind of Christ. Stay, things start to make sense. Things all of a sudden open up in front of our eyes as we read the scripture. Yes, dear friend, Jesus made sure that the instruction book he left for us is very clear on the subject. You might say to me that I don't quite agree with some of these verses. Well, then you have to lay down your life for Christ and God will open your heart to those scriptures and then you will agree. For if the Bible teaches it, it is written there by God Himself. There is no excuse for you and there is no excuse for me. He left us a blueprint and that blueprint is very easy to understand if you search it with the mind of Christ. But for the unbelievers, the scriptures are closed. They cannot see. They cannot understand them. They have to become a new creation so that they will be able to see with the mind of Christ what the Word of God means. This is why you have to be born again to understand the scriptures. This is why people look at you dumbfoundedly when you tell them with joy in your heart that you know that you're going to heaven. They cannot understand how you can be sure of yourself because that scripture that you so clearly understand in Romans chapter 8 verse 16 where it tells us the Spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. They don't understand it the way the child of God understands it. So what do we do about it? We, with respect unto them, teach them about the things of God. We teach them about the loving Savior who is always stretching out His arms, seeking those who are lost, pleading with them like a mother pleads with a child who is in disobedience to come so that 
he may receive them and give him, them eternal life. For he came into this world and was sacrificed for us. Yes, the terrible torture and beating and, and all those things that happened at the cross to him were done for our sake that we may not feel the damnation that comes from God the Father. Yes, our Lord Jesus Christ took that damnation that was mine and yours upon himself and gave himself freely for us that we may have that eternal life. Jesus loved us so much that he sacrificed himself for us. Come to Jesus today. He loves you. And He wants you to receive that eternal life. When we study the New Testament, there are so many scriptures that tell us who we are in Christ. They tell us that a person can know that he is a Christian and that he is on his way to heaven. And the Lord God made sure that those scriptures are there for them that diligently seek that rest that he has promised to his believers. And once a person understands who he is in Christ Jesus, then the Lord God can use him to the fullest. We then can be an ambassador for Christ regardless where we are. When we study the Old Testament, we can see that the old prophets of God knew who they were in Christ. It amazes me sometimes when I study how they even dared to stand against the will of God. And the Bible teaches that those prophets had the same passions, the same weaknesses that we had. There is no difference between them and us. The Lord wants us to understand that in a clear manner so that we can know who we are in Christ Jesus. When we study Exodus chapter 20, uh, 32, the Lord God wanted to annihilate the children of Israel because they, were, they had worshipped a golden calf that Aaron the, the Levite had made for them. And the Lord God said to Moses, Step aside and I will destroy those people. And Moses said, Don't do this, God. Moses dared to intervene against the will of God to stop God from destroying the children of Israel. And he did gain the attention of God so that God did not destroy the people of Israel. Moses fully understood that he had clout with God because he was a child of God. This is what the Lord God wants us to understand. When we study the book of Jonah, there is a very interesting case there. The Ninevites were a cruel people and the Lord God said to Jonah, you go to them and tell them if they do not repent, then I will destroy them and their city. And Jonah knew that God was a merciful God and if the Ninevites would repent, then he would not destroy them. And that's the last thing Jonah wanted to see. He wanted the Ninevites destroyed because they were the enemies of the children of Israel. And what did Jonah do? He ran away from God. But God, through, by a whale, brought him back to Nineveh. And there he preached the word of God. And just like Jonah thought, the people repented and God did not destroy that city. And when you study Jonah chapter 4, that's the last chapter of the book, you are, we, I am amazed that Jonah would even dare to argue with God for not destroying that city. And the biggest amazement is that God patiently explains to him the reason why he didn't destroy Nineveh. Yet, yes, that is the God 
we serve. He is a God who wants us to understand that He will take time out for us. And He will be a merciful God to us and He will be a patient God with us. But most of all, He wants us to understand that He is not out of reach, that we can communicate with Him in whatever situation we are. When we study the Old Testament saints, there are so many examples there for us so that we can bring this into our own lives. For God hasn't changed. He is still the same as He was in the Old Testament. Yes, the Lord God wants us to rejoice in Him, to bring our problems to Him, and even if we want to, we can argue with Him. The Lord is a patient and gracious God, and He covets that relationship. We are fast approaching the end where God will come back into seducing spirits that are being unleashed on this planet are wreaking havoc all over the world. We need to stand strong for God and we need to bring forth the word. We need to preach this gospel as the day is approaching. The Lord has a timetable and I believe that timetable is already coming to a point where He will come back to take His children home. Are you a child of God? Are you a Christ one? Then God wants you in His service. The Lord will bless you on this and make you a blessing. Amen.